Hey everyone, D-Dub Squizzy here, and welcome back to Sekiro. Okay, so I'm hoping the frame rate is better this time. I monkeyed around with the capturing stuff. Ugh. Although my computer doesn't run at a perfect 60 frames all the time. Uh, it, it's usually pretty good. I don't know why. It seemed pretty glitchy before, though. Alright, so we have a pretty large group of bad guys up ahead. One of them out here, though, because two of them come walking out. One's a sword, one's an archer. Sword guy's definitely more dangerous, so you'll just want to take him out. Kill Archer, boy. Kill Archer, and then you want to go straight up and across to the other Archers, because there's a bunch of them out here. Now, killing them can be pretty tricky. The moment you see a fire arrow go up, yeah, you just have to try to step back. I usually take a hit or two going through them. Just keep the pressure on, and they usually die pretty fast. That's bizarre. It looks like someone dropped something over here. There's one or two more over here. One's an axe, one's a sword, I believe. <laughs> Alright. Now, before I go up there, the three-story pagoda is down here. There's also a treasure carp in the water. Gotcha. Easiest way to kill treasure carps is wait till you... It, it kind of requires a little bit of practice. When you swing while in the water after dashing, you lunge like another dash length with the sword out. You only have to tap them with it and they're dead, and so you just do that. Which can be a little tricky, but normally isn't too bad. And then right through here, you can find the three-story pagoda that Anayema would tell you about if you asked him. As well as the guy responsible for more early game deaths from me than anyone else. I've died to this guy a higher percentage of times than anyone else for the first time in a game. Because of the amount of posture damage that he does, he'll shred your posture. And then all it takes is one screw up, and you're stunned. Now, I am pretty good at fighting these guys, and his posture regenerates fast, so you have to keep the pressure up. There we go. Okay. If you don't keep the pressure on him, he recovers his posture crazy fast. Yeah, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it goes very poorly. Got the feathers. The, the uh, Lone Shadows and Interior Ministry Agents are a very common kind of enemy. Or at least, um, a really common kind of strong enemy is the best way I can describe it. And given the amount of times I've played the game, I know their moveset like the back of my hand. Sometimes the execution gets messed up, but for the most part... I can pretty effectively wipe them out without too much trouble. Took me forever to have a chance against them the first time, though, because they're pretty rough. So he usually, if, uh, if you give him a chance, he'll run back and warn the others, basically. They have one Taro soldier and two shield guys. Draw the Taro out first. It's way easier to deal with alone. And this is a Taro you can't really assassinate unless you draw him out and then just run away so that he walks back. And then you can. But why do that? Alright. So he's he uses a lot of delayed attacks. Parrying them is key, though. Alright. The moment that you stun him and he does that bash, that takes a massive amount of posture damage on him. If he's already incurred a little bit of damage, it's basically a death sentence. So you just get him to that point, make sure it doesn't hit you, because it hurts, and then take him out. And then these guys, just basic shield bros. Sometimes they're a little annoying. Usually a single slice is enough to kill them, though. And moving on. Alright, so that's all the enemies over here. Now we just have to go converse with Owl. He's got the key that we need in order to reach the boss, of course. Father, I'm... 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 I
And then he fake dies. In order to leave this place, you have to go up on the building and then over. You can jump back down if you want. Or you can go directly where you have to go by jumping along these. Which is a route that I usually don't take because there have been times where I forget about the pagoda and have to go back for it. You can only take this route once, though, because you can't get back in there after the fire's rage. Now, this place is a little tricky. There's a lot of bad guys over there. Before I tangle with them, though, we're going down this path. There's a good amount of money in this way, and there's a little secret stash along the side right here. Um, right there. There it is. And you'll get another Jinzo statue. I thought it was a Jinzo statue. No, you get a Jinzo statue below, I think. Alright, so there's two shinobi hunters. Fighting two of them at once? Basically impossible. I've tried it many times. It's very, very difficult. Easiest way to deal with these guys is to just assassinate them. That or draw one away and kill him. Oop. Like, draw him away and then kill him when the other one isn't there, which I could probably do now, but sometimes they back up enough and the other guy takes notice. You really don't want that. He should turn around, and then you can just backstab him, and then straight up fight the other one. At least he usually turns around. Come on, man. There he goes. Alright. Neither of them are mini-bosses, so you have that going for you. But still, they can be rough. Alright. Here's the other one. That's their swipe attack. That's the one perilous attack they've got that is not a pierce. Alright, this is a delay. Wait till he takes the first step, then dodge into it. If you try to dodge right as you see the perilous attack sign, he's gonna, he's gonna clock you with that spear. Alright, that's all the shinobi hunters. Now I just have to go kill... The soldiers, of which there are many. Well, bandits. One's got a shield, I think. I usually backstab him. And then there's, I think, one with a bow. And all the rest are swords and torches. This guy's a free kill. Take him out first every time. The others are back here. This guy, you can't really backstab. He's got a bow. You definitely want to kill him before the fight starts. No, yeah, bow. And it's done quietly. Now, don't kill the shield guy. He's easy enough to kill. Kill this guy, because he's an axe. Problem solved. Now you just have a couple of them left. Ow, ow. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was weird. Okay. Didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked, but whatever. These bandits always give me a hard time. Okay, the game keeps on fragging out. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. If it did that normally, I wouldn't mind. In the middle of combat, it's a big deal. Alright, so just consecutive jump. And we're in the estate. We're approaching the actual difficult portion. And it is difficult. Yeah, might as well get that now. I'm about to get one extra, and then I'll take run and slide, because I'm going to need it. The best abilities are the uh, the yellow ones, just because they're flat upgrades. Okay, ow, 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 ow. Okay. I hate the fire. It's so difficult to gauge where to go on it. There's three archers up ahead, and then I think just three guys, but some of them have axes. Which are both better and worse. Axes are way easier to predict, but much harder to stop. Now, you can sleep, sneak along the roofs pretty effectively, but it's it can be kind of tricky sometimes. More often than not, they'll end up noticing you. Alright. So, there's Sword Guy in the middle... Sword guy there, axe guy over there, and then two archers. Ass 
assassinate him. No one notices. Because the others walked off. Alright, now someone noticed. Has to die. Has to die. Okay. Axe guy and bow guy. I recommend trying to stealth the axe guy, because the bow ones are easy to deal with if they're alone. Problem solved. And perfect timing for that skill point. Now we can't lose any uh, XP if we lose, because Juice out kills me pretty routinely too. I'm hoping I can get him without dying. Oh, I forget about this guy. He usually comes out while I'm fighting with the others. There we go. I think I heard one more of them, too. Where's the last guy? Pretty sure there's one around here. Oh, there he is. They usually come running out when you fight them. Okay. So, this is the big challenging portion of this part. We have assistant guy over there, the only assistance you ever get in the game. And he's there. But before we antagonize anything, we're going to want to kill the guys in here. There should be only two of them. Stealth kill one. Get him before he can cause enough noise or trouble to alert anyone else. Now you don't have to worry about them. So there's, I think, just one archer. He's the guy who's farthest away there behind the torch guy. Two swords, two shields, one other sword up there, and then Juzo. Now, the easiest way to do this, and the way I used to do it, like when I first started, um, if you go, I think it's right here, Juzo has a longer detection range than the rest of them, and he will see you before they do. See? You can draw him out alone, and if, if you don't feel confident fighting him, you can just get him to follow you out here. And get this guy to help you kill him. Just the two of you. Against him. Two people on him, he'll die very fast. My preferred way of doing it is talk to him. And then let him charge. He'll start fighting them too. go. We got two shields. That was a grab. Okay. He can handle the sword guy. The shield one he cannot. You have to die. Got it. Alright, now it's just us. Now, Zhu Zhao is rough. That's his one grab attack. He doesn't have any slices or any uh, stabs, but he does have a swipe. And his attacks are off-timed enough to be very difficult. The key to beating him, a lot like others, is don't panic and don't get greedy. Alright, first down. That's a swipe. Okay. Very hard to catch him with the swipe because he moves forward enough. Got it. 
All right. Yeah. That dude is tricky. And we keep moving. Okay. I know there's bad guys in here, but I always get confused as to uh, if they're here now or if they... Right, they're back here. There's more bad guys later. But that's in a whole different memory thing. Now, very important. And easy to miss. This is a secret wall. There's some divine confetti. And there is that. That's what's really important. The Divine Confetti is very helpful, but we won't be using it now, because I don't feel confident fighting phantoms right now. So there's the old woman that gives you the bell. She's here, just kind of warns you about what's going on up ahead. Um, but right at the moment isn't super important. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one. Once I get another one, I'll get that. Then I'll be poised to get Shinobia Eyes and Breath of Life. Both are very important. And I can also upgrade my health and stamina. Alright, so sprint, dead forward, and you can catch this guy before he can get a shot on. If you don't, you're just going to be annoyed. Make sure you talk to him, because he has a snap seed, and it is helpful, or can be helpful. I've gone through the fight many times without using them, but they have, a, they have their value. Now, we're coming up on the first boss fight, which is the first real boss fight. That's where you need the key. This is a very strange fight every time. If you're fortunate, you can catch Lady Butterfly in a repeated animation, and she won't be able to do any anything. And you can very slowly... Ow! Okay, that didn't go as planned. This. As long as you can keep your deflections up, she cannot do anything but continue deflecting. She'll basically be stuck. Now, you have to keep it up, because she's not getting hurt while this is going on. Which means uh, her posture is going to regenerate fast. And it doesn't go up quickly. Ow, I screwed up. I should not have messed up right at the start. That was a mistake. If you can catch her with those in the air, they're devastating. Alright. First phase is over. That is, of course, not the real her. There she is. Now, you can catch her right out of the gate. But she will try to summon her illusionary helpers. If you can keep her from doing so, good on you. It's not easy to do, though. And she will do that. Just keep her from snapping. Oh, that's a swipe. Yep. She usually isn't able to get that off on me, but when she does, it's very painful. Alright, got her. That went very smoothly. It was also about the fastest that fight has ever gone for me. Usually it takes a little longer because she gets a snap off. Alright, 
Now we have our final cutscene, and the Harada estate is done. A lot of people love the Mist Raven. You can do some funky things with it. I never use it for most of those. Um, it has a, a very limited use to me. But that's just because of my playstyle. Um, I don't think I got any Gourd Seeds through any of that. No, I'm pretty sure there weren't any in there. We did, however, get an attack power increase. Uh, and we can grab Run and Slide. So always get that one, because the Medicine ones are in here, and those are very valuable. So three for that, five for that, four for this, five for that. Those are the biggest ones that I get early game, and they're very important. Most of them are healing focused. And being able to keep your health up is what's really important. It makes it so you can afford a couple more mistakes. Because then even if you do screw up, and your posture ends up taking way too many hits, it can recover very quickly. And that's why health is really valuable, is keeping your posture up. Now, Anayama should have a few goods, but I need to talk to him so that he'll tell me what he wants. That's really his most valuable thing. Now, I should be able to get it. Yeah, I have a bulging coin purse, which is a thousand. So I'm just going to pick this up now. It's required for an upgrade way later. I usually don't even use it, and oftentimes in my first run through I don't even get it. That that just opens up some dialogue with Emma if you feel like it. So Kill Cloak Boy first, because he's the tougher one. Keep the flame vent on hand, but do not go for the ogre first. Run past him and kill his spear friend first. Because this guy will just be an annoyance, but he's pretty easy to kill. And then you don't want to fight the ogre up here, so go over, get on the stairs. It's easiest down here. Now that offers a couple free attacks, which keeps him from recovering his posture. After that, you just want to lay into him, but do not get too greedy, because his grab attacks are nasty, especially in this area, where they'll chuck you off an edge. Got his posture low. Got him. Alright, first health bar down. Oh, that's perfect. I wasn't even trying to do that. But being on fire really screws with him. Oh, that was stupid. Oh, man, that hurts. And if he chucks you over the edge and you die, it's instant permadeath. Alright, and there we go. I got pretty good RNG there. He didn't really try much of his grabs. And you get a natural upgrade to your healing gourd as well. So, with that done, there's another mini-boss just up the road. That's one of the reasons that I love Sekiro, was the mini-bosses. They just felt so fun. I, I don't know really why. Dark Souls 3, uh, it's kind of the same way. They're non-respawning enemies when you feel like you accomplished something by putting in the work to take out this guy that wasn't actually a boss. But he doesn't come back. And he was pretty tough. I just love it. Alright, so that's a telescope if you ever wanted one. There's a gourd seat, which is extremely valuable. And now we're at another usually kind of sketchy place. So the easiest way to do this, they have an alarm guy up there. He's gonna spot you. Just acknowledge it. Well, not him, but a gun will. 
And once the gun fires, everyone will notice you, but no one's gonna spot you right away. Alright, he's dead. So the main goal is just to weed out as many of them as you can before getting the general involved. You want to be able to fight him relatively alone. He still has at least, I think, one gun guy over here. Yeah. And then one or two sword guys below. Alright. That's just one of his swordmen. There's one more of them up here. Gotcha. Now it's just us. Ow! Whenever you get him uh, pretty good on posture damage and he takes a step back, he's trying to replenish his posture. Keep the pressure on him. That's what he was just trying to do. It's the only reason he didn't deflect me. Gotcha. Alright, so that's two samurai generals dead. Now. I'm gonna go light up this. A couple geckos will drop down on you when you grab that. Geckos are easy. On top of only being able to take one hit, you can also just jump up and instantly death blow them. Because they're crawling enemies. Crawling enemies can be insta-killed. Before we progress, though, there's a couple of hidden... Not really hidden, but semi-secret stuff that I didn't know about for a while, so... Get some divine confetti. It's useless. Don't try. I've only killed this thing once at this stage of the game. The first headless you can encounter is down here. Um, I would heartily advise against fighting with it. That jump usually isn't too difficult to time. Sekiro's pretty generous with its grab timings, but it, it, it can be rough a little. Every now and then. Alright. So I'm not going to fight the headless. I'm here to discover the secret areas. There are two of them connected to this place. If you jump down, you'll encounter him. Go up here first. You can see this area from way back when, when you're playing the game. It took me forever to know it was a place you could actually go. There should just be some geckos up top. I was hoping to death blow it. Whatever. I don't really gain anything for death blows at this stage of the game anyway. Alright, and now the seat oh not really secret. Now the door right over here is open. I should switch this back to the firecrackers. So for the other one, you have to go past the Headless. Um, now, I can kind of kill Shishaman Warriors pretty consistently, and Headless, I can put them down, but it's, it's always rough. I am not confident fighting Phantasms, or Phantoms, I think they just call them in the game. They're terrible. Whoever designed the fights for them should be fired, and definitely should never have had that job in the first place. I hate fighting this thing, which is why I'm not going to fight it now. I don't have the health to do it. So I'm just going to run on past it. Right through here. And then you just run for it. It's a combination of how they time their attacks. The fact that you take damage even if you block them. 
because uh, of the weird nonsense that they do. Uh, this guy's pretty simple. Wait for him to get off the wall or slap him off, and then insta-kill him. Most people wouldn't think to try it, but he's a crawling enemy, so you can do it to him too. I can't really do anything here but get this, which I always get, just because why not. Um, I'll just go here. I'm going to try to push to Kyobu in this episode. So, the Headless have the Annoying Terror mechanic, which I'm not very good at combating right now. I just don't have the resources for it. I have very limited Divine Confetti and a low attack power, so they're difficult to kill. They have two health bars, but the real reason that they're a nightmare is because of the, uh, the fact that you can't do what you should be able to do in the game. Like, the game teaches you all about mobility and makes it an important part of combat. And then they put you up against something that prevents you from running or dodging. That's just stupid. I hate that. And I hate fighting them. I only do so because I don't really have another choice. Now the snake. Wait for him to look away. Jump down and beeline it for this thing. The second you get in, he's going to attack it. Drop down here. Hide behind the rock. Don't go too far. Because next place, yeah, he comes out there and slithers on in. His face will pass all the way through the cave. Just keep yourself away from his eyes. Ooh. And that's why you be careful about exactly where you go. I think there is a way to do it slightly faster. I usually don't. Just because I don't like playing games with this thing. Yeah. Make sure you're far enough in the cave. Then let him coil out. Run for the tall grass. It takes him a little bit to turn back around. Okay, now you're hidden. Just don't get out of the tall grass unless you have no choice. Right here. Let him, let him coil around a bit. He might hit you, but it doesn't hurt you. It just incurs some posture damage and scares you. Climb along the wall. He'll get up here and start looking around. Whoa. He's never detected me on the wall, so that was weird. Let him look around all confused, and then run to the pagoda. Or palanquin. He gets in, and... Stabby. Now, you can wait for him to stop crashing around and leave before you come to this. I always like to just grab them while I'm here. Some extra snap seeds if you need them. It helps if you can use the grapples. Get you in, and now run, because he's coming for you. He'll start biting at the wall. Trying to get you, but at this point, you're safe. He'll attack the wall a little bit. And then he retreats. He won't be back. Not there. And so, if you want to now go back and loot it, you're safe too. Alright, so we're getting very close to Kyobu. That's the first actual rat that you can fight. The first one that has good defense on him. He, and he has that weird thing about, like... I don't know, some weird lore with the snake about marriage and so I don't... It's weird. Japanese uh, myths and stuff are, are usually pretty bizarre. So there's a number of guards around. This guy gives you a clue that horses are afraid of firecrackers. If you eavesdrop on him. You can't get through the door up here. But there's a little bit of loot. And then there's a, a guy who's walking around below. You can kill these two with no major problem. So definitely do that. And then there's a bunch of guys below, and they warn you about Gyobu the Demon if you overhear them. Now. Of course, the Taro is the one that you want to watch out for. Spear Guy is basically defenseless. All he can do is stab which enables you to instantly McCary counter and kill him. They have a gun up here. They have a gun on the other side. 
And then they have one sword and one spear on the ground. As always, I'm gonna kill the gun first. That one's a defensive player, mostly. So kill him at your leisure unless he charges you. Problem solved. I always take all the items, even though I never use any of them. Like, it's really about the coin purses. Those are one of the only items that I actually have any use for. Because they let me... As long as you're not dying and losing all of your sen, you can get a lot of money out of coin purses. There's a bird nest up there, I think, that's got some loot. Although I'm not certain of that. Maybe there isn't. I might be thinking of a different roof. If I could just jump up there, that may probably make it easier. Yeah, there's nothing here. Alright, so that's all the loot. On to Gyobu. Firecrackers are his bane. You can use them if you feel like it, but you're definitely not forced to. This fight is why I keep English subtitle or English speaking on. My name is Gyobu The key to beating him is whale on. That's about it. Like, he can be kind of weird and tricky to fight, but he really doesn't have a lot of health, and always grapple to it. health bar down. He usually runs and tries to do his swipey attack. That's oftentimes his very first move, that, that big swingy thing that he just did. Ooh! Okay, that was new. But you should have enough recovery items by this point to sufficiently tank him. I beat this boss on my very first try the first time I played, and I sucked at the game. And I killed him before Lady Butterfly, so I had less attack power on the other one. But he's really not that bad. The mechanical barrel, of course, lets you get prosthetic upgrades. It's an important discovery. Now I'm at three skill points, so I can get Shinobi Eyes. There's a memorial mob here. Most all of the memorial mobs, except for that first one, are pretty much... You must visit them. They have important stuff. You can get the firecrackers here if you didn't get them before. But the gourd seed is what's really important. He also has a Dragon's Blood Droplet if you need to cure some Dragon Rot, because that's really what those are for, even though they have other uses. And now we meet Ishin for the first time in his Tengu form. So just accept his thing, he'll tell you to go kill rats. There are three of them, not far out, we'll kill them in the next episode. And you can get, uh the Ashina esoteric texts for them. That woman just gives some cryptic dialogue about Gyobu and hatred and that the sculpture's gonna turn into the demon later. She doesn't matter all that much. If somehow you have uh, one of the ultra skills, one of the top tier ones, like at the end of a skill tree, he will also give you an esoteric text whose name I don't remember because it's so unimportant to me in like every play style that I do. It really doesn't matter that much. Um, getting up here is always a little sketchy for me. You can always just jump and grab onto ledges, I guess. But coming up here is important. This is one of the hidden prayer beads. There's only a handful of them in the game, but they're worth tracking down. So 
So I now have three more prayer beads. I'll have enough for a second necklace pretty soon here. I might as well jump. I think I'll take some damage, but nope, not even any. Enjoy this area while you have it. You get locked out of it eventually. Not really locked out of it. I don't know, the way that they get rid of where you can fast travel to is very bizarre. It's really the area past this gate that they do that with. Alright, and then skills. Go ahead and grab Shinobi Eyes. Now, I think I'll save up for that one. And then go for these ones. Because those are valuable. Mid-air prosthetic is pretty cool. As is that one. And I do like this. This is the one fully upgraded one that I actually think is super handy. Because it lets you light your weapon on fire. And if you have the fully upgraded flame vent, it lets you... Harm... What are they called? Phantoms, like extremely well with it, because the fire hurts them, and then you can just ignite your weapon with it. It doesn't last as long as divine confetti, but it it does the job usually. Goodbye. Okay. So Gord has four uses. I'll go ahead and install the the flame barrel. Honestly first playthrough, I usually don't even get almost any upgrades. I, I get a couple minor ones, but nothing major, because it, it's not a huge deal. I didn't end up getting all of them until way, way, way later. On, like, my third playthrough, I think. And I still had to farm for Fulminated Mercury by that point. I'd played the game through several times. I, I think I'd have enough built up, but I did not. Okay, so now we have four uses of the Gourd. It's been upgraded once. We have two extra attack powers, one prayer necklace, and by the end of the by the beginning of the next section, like once we get to Ashina Castle, the end of the outskirts, we'll have another prayer necklace. And so we're making excellent progress. I think I'm gonna end this one here. Well, I don't know how long I've been going actually. I could push through to Ashina Castle. You know, I'm gonna do it. it doesn't matter, it's my walkthrough. I get to play however I want it. Because we're kind of definitively finished with the outskirts once we get up there. Charge him. He is a gun. If you get too close, he shouldn't be able to hurt you, but it's tricky sometimes, so just be aware of that. Now these guys, if you over overhear them, they tell you about Black Hat Badger. You have no idea who that is at this point, but he's a, uh, a rat that doesn't work with them. He's a traitor. <laughs> Kill him first. That guy's a nightmare. And you'll need the axe to really kill these guys effectively. They have these hats, which sometimes they use to defend themselves and sometimes they don't. I always recommend taking a swing first, then axing them. Make sure you take the hat off, otherwise they'll probably be fine. And then you have, like, I think it's a, just a gun guy, but he might have a sword with three dogs right here. The dogs are looking all around. Yeah, it's a gun. Doesn't really matter. None of them are a big threat. But I always prefer to just fight with dogs alone. Once you get uh, Breath of Life abilities, killing dogs just translates to health. Okay, so, yeah, kill this guy. And then into the bushes. There are two Taro soldiers up ahead, and fighting both of them at once is not recommended. But if you wait too long, you will get noticed by the second one. So just beeline it for this guy and kill him. You will have to fight the second one. There's no way to avoid him seeing you, basically. Alright. Alright. Very weirdly timed with those things. Alright, now we got him. Just back off, let him do his rampage. Just like the big swing that the other one did, he'll incur enough posture damage. It's like a penalty for him using his rage attack, basically. He'll incur enough posture damage that you can just 
and immediately end the fight if he's already incurred some, which he should. Um, there's a little loot off of one of these ledges right here. I think it's just some Akko's sugar. Yeah. But it's loot. And then there should be a coin purse that you can reach up here. Although, I think you have to go around to get it. Yeah. Those guys will warn you about the bowl if you eavesdrop on them. There are two of them below. There it is. One's a spear, one's a gun. Neither of them are really dangerous. Doesn't matter who I kill. And then there's two of them in the next room. The bull usually kills them, but sometimes it doesn't. Be aware it is not required to. Alright, and this wizard, but he always dies immediately. Alright. The bull is extremely hectic. It only has one health bar. It takes basically no damage unless you hit it in the head. So focus on the head. But be aware, you're gonna get hurt in this fight. Just have liberal use of the firecrackers, and uh, as a general rule, try to run in circles around it. I ran right into a tower. I'm not performing well. Ugh. Yeah, this thing does scare me, because it's so just crazy. And it has a lot of health. But only one health bar. See, if you can stay behind it, it's not too bad. Although it will try everything in its power to keep that from happening. If you can get it to go into rage mode, it'll basically end the fight itself. There it goes. Alright. Now you just let it jump around until it hits a wall. Or until it stops. It normally runs into a wall. And you can bait it into one. And then the fight's over when it does that. See, it does that. Posture's all gone and it collapses. And now you just death blow. Very hectic. But you get your second medicine rank. And the last prayer bead needed. Two guards are right out here. Just take them out. That was an accident. I was feeling impatient. You can talk to her. She'll tell you there's someone holy on Mount Senpao in that direction. She's talking about the high priest guy that you can meet if you go there before you finish the castle. Which I don't think I'll do. Because it's not essential. Although it does give you some added insight, you can't fight the, the monkeys until you beat Genichiro. Okay. So, that's it for this one, then. We've completed the outskirts. Yeah, and you can't open this gate ever. I don't know why. It's sort of annoying, but you can't. So, we're in the castle. Next episode, I think we'll do... I don't know if we'll actually... Now, frankly, we should get through the whole castle and the whole area and probably the abandoned dungeon. I'm not sure. We might go through the sunken cat or the... Now nah, we'll go through the sunken cavern, probably in the episode after it. In this episode... Or not this episode, in the next episode... We'll be trying to clear out the entirety of the castle, including the starting area... And the... Abandoned dungeon, which isn't technically part of it, but I kind of consider it to be... Basically, the goal is to do all the side stuff around here and then make it to Genichiro. I, I think that's what we'll do. Uh, so I'm going to end this one here, then. I hope the FPS is better. If it's not, uh, we might just have to suffer through it together, which I would not be ideal. Anyway, that's all for this one. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.